Well, the Bakersfield Christmas Parade back this Thursday for its 41st year, but it goes back much further than that, as 17 story teller Robert Price explains. Ah, the Bakersfield Christmas Parade, one of life's simple pleasures. <laughs> An enduring small town experience that entire families can celebrate together. Except it always hasn't been that simple for those trying to organize the annual event. The first Bakersfield Christmas Parade was held in 1937, but it went dormant for 12 years starting in 1972. The early post-war parades were as much victory celebrations as Christmas parades, and the 1952 parade, held four months after the devastating earthquakes of that summer, drew a crowd of 75,000, double the city's population in those days. Of course, the parade route was long, 21 blocks down Chester Avenue from 22nd Street almost to Brundage. Sylvia Carricker, the former country music DJ who's now the Bakersfield Christmas Parade coordinator, marched in the 1961 parade with her junior high bandmates. It was down Chester, going south from North Chester. We had to go under the bridge where the railroad crosses there. And I remember the cadence bouncing off the concrete walls, and I thought, this is so cool. But that was 1961. One year, a month prior to the parade, a radio station established a clown school, promising that graduates would be invited to march alongside the floats. They expected 20 people to show up in the Toy Circus parking lot on the appointed day, but a hundred wannabe clowns converged on the store. With enthusiasm like that, you'd think the annual parade would be, well, annual. But the Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce dropped its sponsorship of the parade in 1968, citing costs, and the Downtown Business Association, which took over, couldn't sustain it past 1971. The Christmas parade was dead. Things changed in 1983, two years after Mary Kay Shell became mayor. One of her first calls was to Harvey Hall of Hall Ambulance. In time, Hall became Mr. Parade. After more than a decade, the city was ready for it. Kathy Butler, then and now a leader of the Bakersfield Business Association, was instrumental in those days. The third year, Harvey, who had two award-winning floats the last couple of years, said, I want to help. I want to take it over. And basically he did. He had it running just great. We had 20 people on the board. Each one had our responsibilities. He kept on improving it every year. 10,000 people assembled along the route to celebrate that comeback parade. Floats, marching bands, car clubs, equestrian groups, even an unauthorized bull. Circus ice cream, a popular eatery, skipped the traditional float and brought in an elephant. One thing in particular still stands out for newsman Jim Scott, who had just moved to Bakersfield to anchor for KERO-TV. It was, it was amazing. I'd never been to such a big parade before in my life. And my lasting memory is of the dean of local newscasters, Burley Smith, my colleague, riding the parade route in that little Shriners car. And he was a tall drink of water and his knees are up around the steering wheel and he's got this big grin on his face throughout the parade. And he did that for several years running. There were glitches along the way, of course. The second year back, someone riding shotgun in a local car club's entry caravan Having taken a nip or two too many, loudly informed children along the route that Santa had met an untimely demise. That didn't go over so well. And I hope that he's never got another thing from Santa, because that's your punishment. Even the passing four years ago of Everett Goodwin, who with wife Jeannie portrayed um, uh, central characters in the production, the show has gone on. With efforts still going strong to bring back the city's once sagging downtown, the Bakersfield Christmas Parade doesn't seem likely to fade away anytime soon. 120 entries, two hours plus, and hopefully no rain. In downtown Bakersfield, Robert Price, 17 News.